I, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not a development economist, so I will give you a bit of a more general perspective on how, we, how, how I see financial crisis and what the current situation is. So let me, I'm not going to go in detail through this, but that just lists you what, you know, for those who are not specialists, what financial crises are, and there are different types of crises. The interesting, one interesting fact is that, that uh, if we look at, you know, World War, since World War II period, the, the frequency of financial crisis has, has basically doubled since the early 1970s. The first decades, because of the regulation, partly, there were relatively few crises, and now there are many more. So here are, and, and second thing is that crises have a very long history. So here's, here are some well-known crises over the, over the centuries. And, and, and they seem to come. But notice again that this is, you know, this is sort of the big crisis. By, this is actually Kinderberg and Aliber. But if you look at they, you know, again, more than half or, are, are, are here. You know, so there are some old ones. Then there was a period of several decades when not that much happened, except that's the Great Depression and the bubble before that. But then, then it's think, things are really since the 1970s the big crisis. So that, that's something worth keeping in mind that this has happened uh, now. And, and let me start by looking at, you know, as I said, I promised to give you an overview and let's, uh, of the current crisis, uh, uh, some aspects of it. So let me, let me start b b the current crisis view with the advanced economies. This current crisis clearly started from the advanced economies. And so I'm, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look at the US and the Euro area and compare it to the something what, what's called the big five crisis in advanced economies before the current one. And that's the Nordics, three Nordic countries in the 90s, Spain in the 1980s, and Japan in the 1990s. And then I'm going to put these in the same figure where there's a period T, which is the start year of the crisis. crisis. So, so here's the GDP, and this actually even separates the Nordics out, out of the rest, but the other figures do not. <coughs> And, and so you see that, uh, you know, the, if you look at the euro area and the US, the blue and the orange, uh, they, it's pretty much like the previous qualitative the same thing. You have a, a big, uh, uh, you know, you have the decline. After that, it, it's of variable length. And then, then it's an upswing again. And the upswings can be different. I mean, if you look at the orange one, US has already recovered after four years. The GDP <coughs> level was higher than the previous peak, but the euro area not. We of course know that by now the euro area has just not that long ago reached the previous peak. So these the recoveries can be also very different uh, on this, but it, it, you know, there's actually actual declines in GDP and significant declines in GDP uh, uh, in this. And then some other features of the crisis, here's, here's again the, the euro area, I'm sorry, uh, USA and big five, uh, one feature is that they've been uh, typically euro area a little less so, but in the U.S. there's a permanent, permanent been a current account deficit. In the Big Five, there was a de deficit before the crisis, current account deficit, and then it turned into surplus. So the, the, the account is quite variable. Let me skip the public debt. That's perhaps less interesting. In stock prices, you see again a qualitatively same kind of features. That at the, at the peak, peak, uh, you know, basically. <laughs> The U U.S. area and and they you know, they big declines in stock prices. If you look at the numbers, if you take, the, for example, the Euro area stock price indices, I mean, this is a particular index, from uh, index number of 180 to a little over 100, incredibly big decline in stock prices. But they were big also in the U.S. from 150 to about 100, and also in the big five from about similarly from 100, 100 uh, to below 100 actually, somewhat. So big, and, and similarly house prices, where the decline is much longer than in the stock prices. So after four years after the start of the crisis, house prices were still declining in, the, in these situations. So that's, uh, uh, that's the sort of pictures that you get. So let me, uh, out of this, and let me then go on to the emerging countries. So this is actually the pre-crisis period. Let me just show you one picture, which is, there, you know, there are a lot of, lot of regions here, let me not go into details, but you can see that there's upward trend. So there was a, the growth was getting better and better here. They're also running current account surpluses in most cases, 
the these these uh, the emerging countries, and 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 getting into quite fast growth, which of course was very helpful. It's a, this is a period when many people were put out, you know, got out of poverty, poverty situations. Then came then came the uh, the you know the the global financial crisis, which, as I said, originated in the in in the, in the advanced countries, and and what it meant here is if you look at it, uh, there are actually, there's the Asian countries separately, there's just a little bit, you know, they didn't get into negative growth. These are growth rates now, not, not levels. In, in, you know, if you look at the regions, there is some more, but the biggest decline here is the Commonwealth of Independent States, so that's Russia, effectively. Uh, uh, and, and they had, they, as we know, had a big crisis. Uh, you know, this 2008-2009 period was very difficult for them. And then there were a couple of others, but they were not that big. And whereas, remember, the Western world often had crises of from four to six, seven percent declines in GDP. What this did, this crisis, though, is that it turned the current accounts. The current accounts were mostly in surplus, and now, now we start to see we, we start to see more deficits and actually increasing deficits or declining surpluses in the most recent years, which uh, which is also an important aspect to notice here. Notice here. Uh, and, and this period after the crisis with the deficit, of course, led, it was in fact associated with capital inflows, increasing capital inflows. So here are a couple of pictures about that. So here's some uh, various regions about the debt securities. You see the crisis there. There's a little bit, but then even more, you know, the growth rates in most cases got, got even higher. And the, here's an interesting feature. If you break it down to uh, break it down to short-term, long-term debt, and then equities, or roughly FDI, you notice that equities being the the blue one, that is is you know didn't increase. But if you look at the, look at especially the long-term debt to some extent the short-term, which is the smaller numbers, they got higher. So the, you know what what we saw after after the 2008 nine. Great recession in the advanced economies was that the funds started to flow into the, into the into the emerging countries, but not in not into foreign not into FDI, more like debt in, investment. But you know, uh, debt investments, which uh, uh, which was the feature. So the structure of of, of foreign foreign liabilities is is different here now than than what it was before. More more. In debt, and that Lawrence already mentioned, this is a this is a risk situation. Clearly, clearly, because it means that the it means that these these uh, uh, debt instruments can reverse more easily than foreign direct investments, and and therefore uh, there's there's a possibility of volatility and, and and problems problems which might be might be on on coming. So that's that's a quick overview of it, and let me then just. In a, in a fairly bird's eye view, discuss the the recent crisis uh, and 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 something what what has been done mentioned a little bit what has been done here, in, in and what the situation in my view is in terms of of trying to manage financial crisis. So first first of all one has to and this is this is something where the profession is not unanimous I think is the question is that you know how fragile are the financial systems. In, in general, I mean, there are good good reasons, also economic, you know, from even from economic theory, why there is fragility. There's something that the financial decisions are often complementary between agents are complementary, so you tend to go one way and then the other way. Uh, in in most, the other one, of course, is the basic feature is the is the uh, the mismatches in asset and liabilities, uh, liabilities, uh, which is creating difficulties for, and and so that's these are I think features of, of, of financial systems. And then there are also amplifying factors. That if you really go into practice, one is that, you know, economic theory is usually about equilibrium, but in practice, of course, and, and there is also more recent work, work now about the fact that, yes, um, in fact, the systems, how do they behave if it's not quite into equilibrium? They may be herding, they may be learning aspects, so forth. Uh, and so these are limitations in human reasoning. And, and they will they will uh, add additional reasons for at least volatility and possibly even even uh, you know amplifying and leading to leading to crisis once something happens. The other other feature which we saw 
which is worrisome in general in the, in the literature on financial crisis, but which was particularly important in, the, in, the, in this 2008-09 crisis, is the high leverage. The fact that in the preceding period, uh, I mean, there, uh, there are various papers in the preceding period, in fact, for example, banking, banks get along with less and less capital, serious own capital. And, and you know, there was a deregulation going on, and new, there, were, there was also what, what was important is financial innovation. You know, this was a period where the, they were, uh, uh, which started in the 1990s, where a lot of, a lot of uh, new ideas about finance this, uh, uh, were, were, were made, and, 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 and also ways of, of even increasing the leverage. So first of all, these instruments were opaque, not necessarily transparent, but they, sometimes in the legal, there were legal loopholes which allowed for more leverage to build. You know, the, you know these are the, the, the investment vehicles that banks had and so forth. Uh, they, so they managed to, so this was a feature, the innovation and associated leverage. And so when the asset price collapses started to happen, asset price decline started to happen, this was a big amplifying mechanism and led to, led to led to, to the financial crisis. So, so the financial system is very challenging, uh, you know, for, 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 for policymakers because of the fact that it's, you know, it has these in, in inherent fragilities uh, about it. There are these amplifying mechanisms to it, and then there's this innovation, which has been with the, with the, with the development of, of IT and, uh, and improving that, 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 that innovation phase and then in, you know, clever, clever other, other, other aspects of the financial innovation has meant, means that, uh, and, and, and we saw it, saw it in the financial crisis, that this is tricky. You know, how, to regulate, how to regulate this kind of a financial system is difficult. There were, in the past, there were failures. Now there's quite a lot of new regulation, but we don't quite know how well it's going to work. Uh, but certainly the trend has been reversed at this, from less regulation to, to more increasing regulation. That has certainly happened. And so the question really is, is uh, you know, what do you do with this? How do you prevent, how do you prevent financial crisis? And there are two, obviously. One is the, is the prevent. How do you, how do you diagnose, diagnose the coming crisis? There, are, there, are, there is now something what's called uh, also uh, macroprudential regulation going on, uh, that's a new phenomenon, that is, is a very untested territory so far. But the idea is to try to create, uh, you know, advanced indicators and get an advanced view of the situation. Is there, you know, of, of increasing risks and then measures to try to, try to mitigate the risks and, and try to avoid, uh, at least diminish the probability of a new financial crisis. So that's certainly something which is, which is going on. Uh, but but this diagnosing of a, of a coming financial crisis is a, is a big challenge. It continues to be a very big challenge, and and you know we you know we for example in the central banks we discuss this all the time now that it's become a big subject, and we try to do our best. But it's a new subject, and and this and and, and un untested area to a large extent. The, then the other one, of course, is the question you know is is what about the crisis management? Uh, uh, there, there. I think uh, some some basic principles we more or less know now. We we've handled quite many, and there've been quite a many financial crises, and we have some basic ideas what to do, what to do in that that sort of situations. The starting point of this is 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 really this first bullet here, which is that you have to try to maintain confidence in the banking system, or more generally in the financial system. If you because if you don't have, you know, if you, if if the private agents start, to, you know, comp consumers and firms start to lose confidence in the financial system, then things really go back bad. So that that's the starting point. That's the starting point. That is, uh, you know, and and in particular, providing liquidity to the banks uh, and financial institutions, making sure that the financial mar uh, markets work so that funds are being intermediated, is is the starting point. And then, then of course, we've seen that. Financial crises lead to have significant real consequences. So, macroeconomic policy also has an important role to play. It's it's both fiscal policy and monetary policy. Central banks, of course, in the current crisis, uh, in the ongoing crisis, 
did uh, uh, react rather rather quickly in 2008. And I don't know, this is a point being debated, but our view, I think, on the whole is that we managed to, you know, it was a great recession, but we managed to stop the Great Depression, second day Great Depression uh, in 2008. But, and there was real worries about it. I mean, I remember spending a few weekends also where we discussed that we are just a small player in this, but in, this was happening, I think, in all central banks in the autumn of 2008 in particular. In particular. So we know something a little bit better. The idea of, of making sure that the financial system uh, function and there is confidence of that and providing, and that of course is liquidity provision from the central banks and reduction of the interest rates, making monetary policy much easier. That more or less is known now, uh, known, known now, even though obviously it was, you know, it was still a great recession and you couldn't prevent a decline in real, real GDP and in uh, real activities, but at least we managed to, I think it was managed to make it not quite as bad as it, as it was in the 1930s. Then of course the, the second important thing here is then once, you, once this crisis period is over, and the macroeconomic policy has perhaps mitigated the recession, the real effect to some extent. Then, of course, comes the more difficult and time-consuming part, which is that in many cases, if there's been a banking crisis, you have to restructure the banking system. And uh, there again, I think the practices over the years have gotten uh, better in, in time. So you know uh, the principles are there. The question is that sometimes there is not the political possibilities. I mean, you know, in some cases the countries have big political feuds, and and don't. But I think that uh, the, the the I think the basic principles are there. You have to inject capital to fund banks. You have to improve the efficiency of the banking system in many cases. Often, the crisis is because the you know the efficiency is 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 not that good in the banking system. And the government has to take a, uh, has to direct this restructuring uh, restructuring process. I think those are uh, those those ideas. I think are fairly commonly understood nowadays. So I'm happy to stop here. Thank you. Thank you.